my warm-up is really based in the same way I would instruct a young player to come to me. It all starts up here. What we hear is what we replicate. So many times, parents want to bring children to teachers, whereas the best thing they can do is have these, these kids listen to recordings of their instrument or music that they like on a regular basis, instrumental music that they like. The point being, if you ask Rachel behind you what she drinks every morning, you might get coffee, whereas I say coffee, because eight million people in the city where I come from say coffee. No one taught me to say coffee that way. I heard it, I replicated. The brain is wired to copy. So if we can get something in front of those kids that they copy, they're gonna to begin to figure it out. And as teachers, we can help them along. Strength on a brass instrument is nothing more than air in motion. And the freer that we get that air in motion, the easier we are to play. So if we give them the kind of models that parents do or siblings do all the time, the kids will begin to figure it out and we don't have to get into, well, you should do this, you should do this. I start my day with something as simple as this. So you can go to Home Depot, you can go to Lowe's, and yes, you can become a better trumpet player, a better brass player, a better musician. Does this help me actually play the instrument better? No, it's a mental tool, which I'm talking about before. So if I put this up, the ease of playing is right there. That's what I want to copy. Golfers will step back from an important putt. They line it up, they move the club head back and forth. They step up to the ball. They're looking to do the same thing because when they were away from the ball, they saw exactly the path of the ball they wanted. Skiers visualize all the time. Athletes do that all the time. So why can't we? So going back to the tube, all I'm trying to do on the simplest level is copy what I did here. I'll be honest, on that one, I was not close at all. I was more concerned, oh, what if the note doesn't speak? All these things that could happen. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. So my practice, I would literally back up right there and say, no, I'm not going any further. That's my starting point every single day. The blackboard is blank every day. I do have I'm gonna say not a system what I have, but kind of like the old food pyramid where you should eat this, you should eat this, and this amount. I'll start my day with just, for lack of a better word, some flow. I used to do more long tones, but a flow is nothing more than that same, that same ease of tone production, but I'm gonna do it in what we call, a very famous book called The Clark Study. And the goal is to, can I make it going back to that same ease of, sometimes I'll buzz the mouthpiece. And that can take the form of holding the mouthpiece in my hand or throwing something that I came up with. Here, I'm completely completely in control of what comes out versus the trumpet kind of helping me. Does this really help me be a better trumpet player? Not really, it's a mental tool all going back to what do I hear? What do I want to replicate? The freedom that gives us. And when, when I have a student in the room, sometimes I'll say, you know what, close the book. You sit over there, I'm gonna sit here, and we're just gonna play things back and forth. And what can we copy? Going back to that original, when kids learn to speak, they're copying. And if we can get them doing that in the instrument, they're gonna be a healthy player and their enjoyment level, I believe, will go through the roof.
When we're playing here, we're concerned what's coming here. I have to stay on my side of the mouthpiece to stay healthy and stay happy. But once we take the mouthpiece out, for some reason, the fear of making a mistake is not the same. So, um... We just play. You put that in the trumpet, all of a sudden you're thinking, okay, well, do I have to do this? I didn't think about anything physically or what I had to do. I just heard something and copied that. So, yes, there is a practical application. I can say, I'm going to do 500 push-ups, but in reality, unless there's a practical application of, I'm going to practice, I'm going to do X amount, this is the system, I'm going to get there. But the driving force behind all of those is the end result of what we want. There are days we play taps and it's 14 degrees out there or it's 98 degrees. If I'm thinking of the fact that it's 98 degrees or 14 degrees, I'm in trouble. All I know is that I put the horn up, everything else is gone. I don't think about the weather. It's me providing a service for that family. I put the instrument up and it's the same thing I've thought before of I'm hearing the pitches. And I just allow myself to play because I'm hearing myself. What is it that I want to sound like? Because there's great freedom in that. I have a uniform. I have to look the part. Now here's an opportunity for me to play what I hear. And that's freedom. And it's freedom to provide a service that they deserve. The fascinating thing about that is we're trained to perform and entertain. But when we're in that situation, we're no longer entertaining, we're providing a service. And we're providing a service that hopefully they only have to hear once in their lifetimes for the family. And when I play taps, the family has no idea who I am. But they're never going to forget what I did that evening, morning, or in that, that afternoon. And so that service I provide for them is more than gratifying. I mean, in some ways, that's some of the most gratifying things I do.